Hi guys, this is Eddie, and I'm going to be showing you how to set up your layers for coloring so you can turn something that looks like this into something that looks like this. We do that by creating something we call flats, which we'll go over. This won't be a coloring tutorial, just uh, the workflow setup to enable any type and style of rendering, such as anime or even painterly styles. Okay, so let's get down to business. First concept we're going to be discussing are flats. We use flats so that we can quickly make selections off of different parts of your object and isolate them for rendering to prevent unintentional edits to surrounding areas. So let me show you an example of what a flat layer looks like. Notice that the character has been sectioned off into separate parts with each part coded in a different solid color. Okay, so let's start making the flats. First, make sure that you create a separate layer for your blocked flats colors, and this layer goes below your line art layer if you happen to have one. Next, we're going to grab our magic wand tool. And to grab that, go to your toolbar and find the brush with the circle and the marching ants, and left click and hold, and then go down to select your magic wand tool if that's not already your default tool. Now, before you select anything, make sure the object you select has no gaps in the line art or else the magic wand will select inside of your object, like this. So with that ensured, let's select the outside of the line art and make sure that you have the line art layer selected. Your selection has now wrapped around your object, but note we're selecting the environment or the background, not the object. And we're going to eventually invert the selection. First, let's continue selecting outside the object by making sure that all the holes are selected as well, such as inside of the sword. Next, we have to expand, not contract, our selection. See the marching ants? They sit just outside the line art, which means that when we eventually invert the selection, like so, our painting will also sit outside the line. By first expanding the selection before inverting it, your selection will get pushed inside of the line art. Now, when it gets inverted, the paint will sit inside of the line art as well. To expand, go to Select, Go down to Modify, and then click Expand. Go ahead and go with two pixels. I find that that usually works well for me, but you can adjust that depending on your needs. Now that you have expanded your selection, it's time to invert it. And to invert it, go back up to Select, and then select Invert, or you can use the shortcut shift Control i Now that we have our object adequately selected, click on your Flats layer and use your Paint Bucket tool to fill your selection there. The color is up to you. Uh, the shortcut to fill your object is Alt Backspace. Okay, next we're going to cut this solid into separate components that isolate different sections of our object. There are many ways to do this, but I'll show you an easy and lazy way, and then the more methodical but clean and proper way. In either case, you want to make sure that you lock the transparencies of your flats layer at this point. To see the transparency, Go down to your background layer and go ahead and uncheck that eye icon. And now you can see the checkered pattern in the back. That means there's nothing there. So now go back to your flats layer and select it and then click that checkered icon up here. That locks anything currently transparent on that one layer so that only things already on that layer can be painted over and anything transparent cannot be touched. This prevents us from destroying the outline of our flat shape. So now we can paint over it all we want and nothing outside the object will get touched. We only need to be careful of how we paint inside of the object from now on. Now let's talk about the easy way to break this up into pieces, which is done by color coding different sections of the object and that's to literally just paint them in. Simple, nothing fancy, quick and dirty. Uh, the price it's that it's sloppy but occasionally you'll find this works fine depending on the situation. So, uh, but for precision, you want to turn to your lasso tool. Now to find your lasso tool, go on your left to your toolbar and go ahead and select your lasso tool here. If you don't find that and you have a different icon, just go ahead and left click and hold and then you can find the other tools within that section. Uh, now let's look up here really quick because these are the modifiers for that tool. And you have four of them. Uh, we're going to be working with just the first three. The first one is add new selection. And that one just creates new selections and then deselects whatever previous selection you had on your object. Uh, the next one is add to selection. 
So no matter how many selections you already have, you will be able to add more to that. And the next one is the subtract from selection. And with this one, you'll be able to subtract away from your previous selections. For the last of tool options, we're going to go ahead and keep the add to selections. Now we're going to be drawing our selections inside of the object and we're going to segment different components of it. Now when you're drawing, you only need to be careful on the inside as you draw, but when you're drawing outside of the object, you can scribble, you can do whatever you want, because at the end of the day, remember we locked our transparency pixels, so we can't physically paint over it anyway, so it doesn't matter if you select outside. So that should help you guys make quicker selection as you're drawing them out. Now that we have our selection, go ahead and color it in with a hard edged brush at full opacity and make sure that you select any random color, as long as it's different from the original color of the flat. Once you have one segment, creating more segments becomes a lot easier with the user magic brush. So when you select the original color of the flat, you'll see that it excludes the new segmented color. And that way you can just concentrate on the remaining parts of your object and keep cutting away by going to your lasso tool and then making sure that you have the subtract from selection on and then cut away any parts of that selection that you don't need. The remaining selection, go ahead and color that selection with a new color. Keep repeating this method until you have segmented all of the individual parts that you personally need. Now we can render the individual parts by using your flats layer as your selection tool. First, make sure you lock your flats layer so you can't destroy it by accidentally painting over it. Now, all you're allowed to do is make selections from it. Okay, so now let's create a new layer where we can start the actual painting. For this example, this layer will be for the upper torso. Now go to your flats layer and rename it to flats master layer. This is in order to differentiate it from the new flats we're about to create. We're going to select all of the upper torso skin, excluding the gloves. Now that we have those pieces selected, we're going to copy by either control C or go into your edit and select copy. Now we're going to go into our new layer and we're going to paste it in place. What we don't want to do is control V to paste it in there or what we also don't want to do is go into edit and select paste from there. The reason we don't want to do that is because Photoshop likes to paste your selection in some random location for some reason. So in order to avoid that, we have to go into edit, down to paste special, and then you're going to select paste in place. And it'll paste your selection in the exact space from where you originally copied it. This is now going to be your new upper torso flat layer, and we're going to go ahead and lock this layer. A helpful tip is to put each section into its own folder for better organization, and then name that folder according to the name or area of the object you're working on. Now we have a more easily selectable torso flat, and to paint over it, we're going to create a new layer above it. This will be for our torso's base color. Now if we paint over this layer, we'll be covering up the flat layer below it. What we want to do is make it so that the layer above only reveals what you paint inside the confines of the flat layer below. You do this by right clicking on the above layer and then select create clipping mask. And like that, anything that was painted outside of the lines of the flat layer below get clipped off from visibility. They are still there, they are only invisible. And to see that, go ahead and right click again and then go up to where it used to say create clipping mask and now says release clipping mask. And you will see your original painting strokes are still there. So this doesn't prevent that from being painted, it just means that when you create a clipping mask, it creates a mask outside of the flat shape and makes those areas invisible. A quick little trick here, to automatically create a new clipping layer, always click one layer below a clipped layer and then click new layer from the icon below. If the topmost clip layer is selected, when you click the new layer icon, it'll create a new normal layer. For your projects, you're going to create new clipping layers as needed. 
In this case, I'm going to be using three clipping layers, one for my light tones, my mids, and my shadows. Repeat this process for every new section you work on. Fun little tip, you can even lock the transparencies on these clipped layers in order to create cool painting effects. And that's it for creating flats and how to use them. Uh, remember this is just one method and every artist has their own unique setup and strategies for how they use these principles. Some create only using one solid flat and then paint over from there, relying on the constant reuse of the lasso tool to isolate selections as they go. And then others paint destructively, painting over whatever they previously painted completely unafraid. So it's up to you. Practice these principles first and then find your own way that best fits you. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. DM me with any questions and uh, keep putting mileage on that pen. Happy arting.